In a recent video, I floated golf balls in salt water to test them out for balance, and some of you guys suggested I get a golf ball spinner to get more accurate test results. So I ordered a Checo Pro golf ball spinner for about $35. It came included with a marker and two batteries. You do need your own screwdriver to get the batteries in though. But other than that, the device is pretty simple to use. Once you get it, you just take the lid off. You just stick a golf ball in and put the lid back on. Then you go ahead and hit this button. As you can see, we get a little bit of a light blinking. Once it gets to max speed, it's gonna turn solid. And then we just take their marker. Oh, wrong hand. We take their marker. And then we're gonna stick it in the little hole. And then that's pretty much it. We're gonna give it a second to stop. Kinda takes forever. But eventually we'll take this lid off. And there you have it. We have a ball with a mark all the way around it on its balance point. But how does that work for testing golf balls? If you have like a whole dozen and you wanna go through them and find the good balls and the bad balls. Well, let's take a look at that. All right, so the first thing I did when I got this thing out of the box is I took some Pro V1s and I salt water tested them. I just wanted to see what the baseline was and get that established before we get started. After that, I get a line on a golf ball that I know for a fact is bad. I take the ball, I put it back in there sideways, I'm gonna spin it back up, and let's see if we get a different result. As expected, we do not. We spin it up and it pretty much immediately goes right back to that spot and then it hovers very, very close to it. Well, that's kind of the result we expected on a bad golf ball. Let's test one that passed the float test. I go ahead and spin it, get a line on it, turn it sideways, spin it again, and I'm really hoping to get a different result this time. But before I can even mark it a second time, I already see the line starting to come back to the middle. It does take a little bit longer and it doesn't sit in the middle as long as the first ball but it is returning back to that spot. But all that said, I do mark it again. I let it stop spinning and pull it out, take a look at it. And I do have two separate lines from one another, but they're really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in sideways, spin it again and see what happens the third time. This time you can see the lines in the middle even more than before. So it's gyrating a little bit, but that balance point is still right there in the middle. And again, this is a ball that we know passed the float test. Go ahead and put a third line on it, and honestly, it's hard to even tell between the first couple. So that balance point is still right there, and we know that this was a good golf ball. So after testing a dozen golf balls in salt water and on the golf ball spinner, I can say that the golf ball spinner is really good at finding the balance point of a golf ball and if you're looking for a way to line your ball up when you're putting that's actually balanced and gonna give you the best chance to roll the ball really well, I think this is a great product for that. Do I think it's good for testing golf balls? No. And that's because it's too good at finding the balance point. And let's be honest, there's no such thing as a perfect anything when it comes to mass manufacturing. Every single golf ball is probably off by just a little bit. And this thing will find it because it's spinning the ball at such a high rate of speed. And that's why you can't tell the difference between these golf balls. Despite the fact that this one failed a float test and this one passed it, you really cannot tell the difference. One may wiggle a little bit, one may wiggle a lot on the spinner, but other than that, there's really no way to tell unless you just put a bunch of lines on the ball and then you end up with something that's ugly like this. And how are you gonna putt looking at this thing? I mean, this is hideous. So I don't think it does a great job for testing. And I will say there's a few things that aggravate me about the product. So what I don't like about the product is that it will put ugly lines on a golf ball like that. And uh, if you wanna get a better looking line on the golf ball, you have to really press on the marker and kind of aggressively mark the ball. Then all the dimples on the ball kind of tear the marker up. And the problem with that is that the hole on here to mark the ball is so small that the only marker that fits is their personal marker, which sell after shipping for like 20 bucks a four pack. So that's like annoying and it kind of feels like a scam to me. So to answer the original question, does this thing replace for testing? No, I don't think it does. I think it's great for finding the balance point on a golf ball, but I don't think it's gonna work for testing because I need something that's gonna show the horrible golf balls and let the ones that are really close pass because there's nothing perfect in mass manufacturing. Now, all of that said, I have a lot more golf balls that I'm gonna be testing in the future, so make sure you like, share, subscribe so you can see all of those videos. 
If the golf ball that you're playing isn't on this list, be sure to let me know what it is in the comments so that I can add it. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of this device down below, and I'll see you guys next week.